I took a job at Initiative as the head of the network broadcast buying department. So it was a similar job to Peggy Green, actually. Um, so I was getting a job like Peggy's, even though I had far fewer years of experience than Peggy, at Initiative. So it was a huge opportunity for me. I went from running a group of seven to a group of 100. And um, this is an experience I, I like to tell young people about because it wasn't actually, it didn't start out as a very good experience. But um, it ended up being very transformative for me because uh, ultimately, as I said earlier, uh, oftentimes the most difficult times will teach you the most and potentially change you for the positive more than any of your successes would. And I'll be honest, until I got to this job here, I really hadn't done anything wrong in my career. That was probably, what, 15 years into my career? And I was one of those people that was succeeding my way through my jobs. And so I went and I took this job managing a group of 100 people. And um, I took it thinking I was the best at what I did. I was great at what I did, which was managing a group of seven people, but doing TV buying really well, spending that money with the TV networks, getting the most value for clients, showing clients how much more we could do for them with that money than somebody else could do. I was really good at that. But I had never been in the positions where I was leading a group of people where I might not actually be spending every day in the same office with those people. I might, you know, when you work with 100 people, you don't see most of them most of the time. You're, they, they know you by email or they know you by your, you know, your town halls. They know you by different interactions that they have with you, but it's a whole different ballgame. And it's basically trying to move from being a manager to being a, a, a leader. And I, I didn't know what leadership was. And, and that, that's really no fault of mine. Um, what happens in the world of business is people do well and they keep getting promoted and they keep moving into more jobs of more responsibility. And um, they don't always, uh, no one really stops for a minute to teach them about what leadership is. Leadership is a lot of very specific things, but quite often it doesn't have a lot to do with how good you are at doing the job that you were doing or doing the job that the people that work for you are doing. Leadership has a lot to do with how you inspire people or how you communicate with people or how you offer them the opportunity to do what they're supposed to be doing before you tell them how they should be doing it. All of these things are really important. So to try to make a long story short, I started this job in January of 2008. And by the time we got to June of 2008, I thought I was doing great. I was, you know, cooking along in my big job, thinking I was um, teaching all of these people the future of the way that we should be doing what we were doing. At the time, I was advocating for a lot of, you know, looking at digital video and thinking about things beyond just the TV screen and trying to teach folks the future of our media business. Um, and I was doing a lot of talking and not a lot of listening. And um, what happened was the 12 people in, there were 12 very senior people in that 100 person group that reported to me. And they all, um, it turns out they all didn't like me very much. And I didn't know this. I, uh, I actually asked the company to get me an executive coach. These people exist. And the executive coach did a 360 degree interview with all of those people. And um, when she was done with the process, she came back and she sat with me. We had a meeting scheduled for three hours. I thought that was kind of odd that I would have a three hour meeting for her to tell me you know, what she learned. And um, the first words out of her mouth in that meeting were, don't worry, Tim's gonna support you on this. Tim was my boss, the guy who brought me into the company. And you're not fired. Now, you can imagine that that was um, a highly unusual statement to come out of somebody's mouth in a meeting with me. I had never heard anything or gotten anything but pats on the back. And um, I was shocked. And she went on to read to me a list of 25 things that the group really didn't like about me. They hated them. And they were very specific about it. And I'm not going to go into the detail of all the things, but let's just say that I was I was telling them what to do. I was acting a little bit like a know-it-all. I was 
I never was listening to them about how the problems that they were dealing with or like how they wanted to accomplish a goal that I was giving them. All I was doing was saying, I want you to go get this done. And here's how I did it in the past that worked really well. Go do it that way. And that's the worst way to manage. And th there was about 20 examples of that. There were a couple of ones that in there that were a little iffy, like, like, why does he wear a tie all the time? Who the hell does he think he is? Uh, at the time, that was, that was a big surprise. But I stopped wearing a tie. I never wore a tie again ever since that day. Um, guys, that was probably one of the most upsetting and scariest moments of my whole career. And uh, I sat there in that meeting with this woman, Beth, and I, I cried uh, when I heard it after a while. I, I, I sat there and listened and listened. And I, at first, I was angry and I was upset. And then I, I realized that it was, I couldn't believe that I had worked for 15 years to be the best leader in the in media industry as I, that I could possibly be. And I was failing at it. I had, I had almost a mutiny on my hands. And so two things happened that were critical in that moment. One is that the company decided to back me on that. And they, they, they felt I had the talent and I had the capability to deal with this. And so my boss, Tim, he hired that consultant to work with me and with the 12 people that she interviewed for six months on how we could work better together and to teach us how to be better, me to be a better leader and them to be better support for a leader because she felt that they weren't all being their best selves either. And um, the second thing is I spent the weekend um, with some pretty dark moments, but I spent the weekend working on how I would address every one of those 25 things that they said that they could not stand about me. And it was a long weekend. It was the Labor Day weekend. And I just, I couldn't believe it was another extra day. It was a horrible weekend. But on Tuesday of that week, I, I got them all together and I sat there in front of them. And I told them what I just told you. I said, my whole life, I've always wanted to be the, I wanted to be Peggy Green. I wanted to be the best leader that anybody could be for you guys and to sh for you to like working for me and for me to be teaching you things. I, I want to help. And I, I've always felt that I've always desired to be the best leader I can be. And, and I'm not, I'm not being that. And here are the things that you guys have pointed out to me that I am not doing right. And I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do about each one of those things. And I went through every one of them. And then we sat there in silence for about a minute. And finally, somebody said, wow, got to give you credit for doing that. And, uh, and I asked everybody if they were on board with working with me to try to hold me accountable to the things I wanted to do. And if they would mind holding themselves accountable to some of the things that it would be good if they could do to help support. And we all agreed in that room that we would give it a try. And over that six month period, we all learned how to work together great. I learned a completely different way of leading and uh, managing and uh, allowing space for people and um, the qualities of leadership as opposed to the quality of being great at your job. And it was, it was, it was the worst moment of my life that taught me the most in my career that anything has ever taught me. And from that point on, I have always felt that um, I've been a much better leader because of it. And I have, I've gotten that feedback. And um, I was at that company at initiative for a decade. I, I, I was with them until uh, only about three years ago. And that's when I decided to, to join Dentsu. But uh, at my last job at initiative was the president of the agency. So over that 10 year period, those leadership lessons that I went through and many others that were ups and downs, um, I was able to um, find my way to leading the company in total. And it was the most fascinating career tr you know, trajectory I could have imagined. And um, anyway, I, I try to tell that story for folks because I want them to know that it's not all roses. It, you know, sometimes you got to go through some pretty dark moments to be great. And I feel like that helped me be a greater version of myself anyway, and uh, something that I think people can take as a lesson in any kind of business that they're going to be in.